Of Pennsylvania coming to you for your midweek check-in. I'm coming to you today from my study here at home. This is where I work. This is where I have my best books. And uh, as we are in ordinary time, right now ministry is a little bit slower, and that happens in the church. Uh, this is a bit of the lull before we really start getting back into the Christmas and Easter cycle. Uh, we are in the dog days of summer, as they say in baseball. And uh, so uh, other than the divine service, we don't have a lot of ministry happening outside of the divine service, but that's okay. Uh, we are going to come this week on Thursday at 7 p.m. and then Sunday at 10 a.m. And we're going to rest in the, the Lord's Word. And ministry is like that a lot of times. Uh, there are times when it's very busy and we are engaged in the Lord's work, working in His vineyard here in Ephrata and uh, regionally and, and around the world. Um, and then there's also times when things are a little bit slower, and we're in one of those times, and that's that's fine. That's ordinary time. Uh, we're going to hear uh, from John chapter 6 tonight in the Divine Service at 7 p.m., and we're going to hear and we're going to be in John chapter 6 once more uh, this Sunday, which is going to be the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. I had to check there. And we're going to hear again from Jesus. Uh, he talks about... Um, that he is the living bread that came down from heaven. We heard a little bit of that last week. And he goes on further to say, if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Uh, so our church, the church, is about um, handing over to the world the bread of life, Jesus, in word and sacrament, uh, in his gospel, which declares to us, that we are forgiven and free in Jesus, and then declares to us that death has been conquered. And we have this in the gospel, and we also have it uh, in the gospel of the Lord's Supper, don't we? Uh, where we receive um, uh, the, the body and blood of Jesus, the, the, the bread of life, the, the, the cup of salvation, as St. Paul will describe it. And so that's what we're going to be doing this week, 7 p.m. Divine Service. 10 a.m. Divine Service on Sunday, and that's the best. So a little bit about my study. Here's where I do uh, my work and my thinking, things like that. So I thought I'd take you around. Again, I haven't picked up, so this is kind of as is. Maybe I should have picked up, but let's take a tour because I have my books kind of organized in, in ways. Um, and, you know, uh, John Wesley, the, uh, the great Methodist preacher, I once said to his local preachers, most of whom were you know, shopkeepers and, and blacksmiths who were going out to preach the gospel. He said, uh, I want my preachers to develop a habit of reading and study. And if they do not develop a habit of reading and study, they should go back to their previous vocations. I've held that to be a part of my ministry is to continually be in study of God's word, of his theology, of his church. Uh, and that's one of the things I really love about being a pastor is that there's always one more thing to learn. You can never master it all. Um, and so there's a continual study uh, that's expected of a pastor. And it's a real privilege to be in God's Word day in and day out, to be studying, to learn, to grow in God's Word. And I like to think that I have, and uh, there's more to learn. So here is my study. So, so this is where I have my devotional time, uh, especially in the morning. Uh, I have the Treasury of Daily Prayer here. And the Treasury Daily Prayer is uh, published by Concordia Publishing House. It has the orders of morning and evening prayer and all of the daily lessons and prayers uh, that um, uh, form my devotional life. Uh, I also, as you can see here, have my prayer list, my written prayer list, who I pray for every morning. And I have my Salem Church roster. I pray for members of the Salem Church every morning. That's my uh, duty and responsibility as a pastor. In the middle is my English Standard Version Bible. On top of that are my reading glasses because I'm now, as my children remind me, elderly. I uh, always need pens and highlighters when you're studying the Bible, at least I do. And then what I do is, in the morning, and this is something that I kind of started back at Lent, and I've really come to appreciate it is I will do my morning prayer office and my Bible study in the morning, get up very early to do that, and then I will read a sermon. I love reading sermons in the morning. Usually they're not too long, and it's just a wonderful way 
to um, meditate on the loving purpose of God and Jesus Christ. And so currently I'm reading sermons of Norman Nagel, who was a uh, Lutheran Church Missouri Synod pastor back in the 20th century. Uh, I think he died a number of years ago. Uh, but previous to that, I was reading sermons of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And then I have a whole stack of other books of sermons that I'm planning on reading. Uh, it's a great way to um, have a, a devotion in the morning. All right, so we'll start up here at the top shelf. <laughs> Uh, some Luther stuff, uh, as you can see, Salem Church plate. And then this is my collection of Luther works that was given to me by a retired pastor. And one of the things I love about the, having this collection of Luther works is that I never run out of things to read. The guy was a prolific writer and a wonderful writer at that. On the bottom shelf here are just uh, biographies about Luther and um, some more of his writings. This is this three volume set here by Martin Breck it is probably the the best modern day biography of Martin Luther. I heard once that uh, um, other than Jesus Christ no one has more biographies written of him than Martin Luther. Fascinating character. All right. All right. So top shelf here in my uh, study in my library um, some sermons of Martin Luther here, some um, Martin Luther, The Bondage of the Will, which I highly recommend reading. And then, you know, to bring it to more Pennsylvania contemporary uh, figure, the journals of Henry Muhlenberg, um, the Pennsylvania uh, German Society put out a book about the pastors and people of early colonial Pennsylvania. By the way, these ones belong, I think, to Miriam Moore, and I bought them at the Effort of Cloister. Um, and then just some more books about kind of contemporary North American Lutheran um, uh, life. Statue of Martin Luther from Fort Wayne. And then here is Gerhard Ferdi, great 20th century theologian. Hermann Zasse, another uh, wonderful confessional Lutheran theologian from the 20th century in Germany. Paul Althaus, who was a, a great theologian on Martin Luther, although he had some issues. Uh, and then next level down here, next shelf down, uh, some confessional Lutheran uh, stuff, Lutheran theology, confessional um, um, uh, books. Next level down, more Lutheran stuff, uh, Lutheran worship stuff, um, some catechism commentaries. Uh, here we have... Uh, some of my favorite theologians, Oswald Bayer, who's a contemporary uh, Lutheran theologian from Württemberg, Germany. Some Lutheran quarterly journals by Bayer, Oswald Bayer there. A uh, couple of, some more Martin Luther stuff. And then lower shelf here, kind of ecumenical, some Roman Catholic stuff, some Eastern Orthodox stuff. Um, yeah, it's kind of a hodgepodge down here. Um, and then just some German language stuff, German history stuff. Oh, this is a great book. Just came out recently, Katja Hoyer, Beyond the Wall, History of East Germany, History of Berlin, um, some travel books, some hodgepodge stuff there, some more travel books down there. Um, this is kind of my military shelf. Military history is another interest of mine. So History of the Navy and Marine Corps. Um... Some further kind of just generalized history of uh, World War II, World War I, U.S. Navy stuff, um, things like that. Uh, this is kind of about Lutheran ministry, about being a pastor and the church. Um, it's not all Lutheran. Some of it's Baptist and maybe some other traditions as well. Next level down, kind of a secondary um, thing that I like to study is English church history and Anglicanism. Uh, that's this shelf here. And then hodgepodge down here of all kinds of things that I've just happened to collect. Some commentaries, things like that. And a Phillies mug sent to me by my cousin for the 1980 World Series. Uh, so that's my dad's ship, USS Willis A. Lee, his watch, his discharge. This is kind of a um, another hodgepodge uh, shelf. Just needed more space. Books I've read that I enjoy. Um, finished this one, uh, The Stripping of the Altars Last Winter, Eamon Duffy. And 
this is what I got for Christmas. And you're going to think this is weird, but uh, the colonial records of the Swedish church in Pennsylvania. Uh, and what a great Christmas gift it was. Eight volumes of colonial church history in Pennsylvania. Just One of the things I would commend to you as a Christian is to read and to read well. Cultivate a life of reading. We are privileged to live in a generation, in a time, when the Bible is accessible nearly everywhere. Uh, I would encourage you to have a physical hard copy of the Bible and to read that. Uh, I know you can read the Bible on your phone or on your computer. Uh, I just I think it's important for us to have it in print, on paper, and you carry it with you, and you can mark it and study it and, and memorize it. Uh, so I would highly encourage you to do that. If you're not a reader, uh, it just takes a little self-discipline. Uh, set aside the time. You know how important it is. And so set aside the time. And I would recommend in the morning, before the world gets a hold of you, before time gets away from you, be disciplined and set aside a little time in the morning to read your Bible and to pray. And with the prayer, uh, you can certainly use the small catechism, which has orders of morning and evening prayer. And uh, those things form us. And those things are important to us. But I would also encourage you to develop a life and a habit and a habitus of reading as a Christian and reading good stuff. And by that I mean, um, I think it was C.S. Lewis or maybe, I don't know, somebody from the 20th century once said that uh, for every new book you read, you should read like four or five old books. Uh, so for every kind of new book you see at Barnes & Noble or on Amazon that just comes out and it deals with Christianity or faith, that's fine. But then go on eBay or uh, some of these other used book uh, sellers and find an old book probably before the 20th century. Um, look for... Um, people like Charles Krauth, uh, who helped found uh, the Lutheran, kind of refounded the Lutheran Church in Pennsylvania in the, um, uh, the middle of the 19th century. Uh, that's a guy you really want to be reading, especially his book, Conservative Reformation, um, which deals with uh, a recovering of the Lutheran confession in Pennsylvania uh, around the time of the American Civil War. Um, and then, of course, go older than that. Uh, read Martin Luther. Read uh, Philip Melanchthon. Read the Book of Concord. If you if you've joined Salem Church since I've been at Salem, uh, you've been given a Book of Concord. There's a reading plan in there. Read the Book of Concord. Spend time with it, and write down your questions and and bring them. And we'll work on them. We'll work on them together. We'll see if we can find the answers, and we'll learn from them. Uh, read your Bible. Read Martin Luther. Uh, and uh, so I would spend more time in older books and older authors than I would uh, with the newer stuff. I would also point you even further back. Uh, go back to the early church fathers. Read them. St. Augustine especially, who had such a profound impact on an Augustinian friar known as Martin Luther. Uh, all of this is for us then to grow in Christ. To... Um, be devoted to him all that much more. That he uh, is the center of our lives. He is upon our thoughts and expressed by our lips. That's what we want that to be. And so in the words of John the Baptist, uh, I must decrease and Christ must increase. And that's what we want for our lives. And so we want to order our lives in a way that that happens. And cultivating a life of reading, I think, is helpful. So that's kind of your midweek update. That's kind of a, a word of encouragement to, to be a reader. Um, and uh, God bless you in that. Uh, God bless you and keep you. I'll talk to you later, Salem Church, and uh, have a great weekend. See you at the Divine Service, Thursday at 7, Sunday at 10.